Hello students, how are you all? Welcome to Tungal Online Classes. In the last video, hydrocarbons completed, so which is present in assignment number 2. In this session, I am going to discuss the remaining 3 theoretical chapters in assignment number 2. Yes block elements, redox reactions and environmental chemistry. So all these three are completely theoretical lessons. Just read once that is sufficient to answer for any questions. So that's why I will give you uh, important concepts only and I'll make you remember once briefly. <clears throat> now, so first chapter is redox reactions. Where there is an oxidation, there is a reduction. So, oxidation and reduction takes place simultaneously everywhere. So, the reaction in which oxidation and reduction takes place is called a redox reaction. Oxidation means loss of electron, reduction means gain of electron. So, <clears throat> oxidation and reduction. Oxidation means loss of electron. It is gain of electron, right? Here, addition of oxygen and it is removal of oxygen called reduction. Next, removal of hydrogen, removal of hydrogen. But here, addition of hydrogen addition of hydrogen called reduction. So if electron lost, so oxidation state increases here, oxidation state decreases here. Right students? For example, M2, M plus 3, oxidation state increases. 0 to plus 3 increases oxidation. M plus 3 to M. It means plus 3 to 0 oxidation state. Oxidation state decreases, hence it is reduction. Oxidation state decreases reduction. <clears throat> so this one is losing electron undergoes oxidation, but itself acting as reducing agent. Reducing agent. But the reaction is oxidation. This one lose uh, this one is gaining electrons. Gaining means it undergoes reduction, it undergoes reduction then acting as oxidizing agent. The species which itself undergoes reduction called oxidizing agent. The species itself undergoes oxidation called reducing agent. So very easy. Uh, to understand this chapter we should know first of all uh, oxidation states. We know students oxidation states. So roughly the one, two, three examples I will discuss. H2SO4. Find the oxidation state of underlined sulfur. There are two hydrogens, one sulfur and four oxygens. And here there is no charge on this species, hence it is equalized to zero. If charge given, that is equalized to charge. Then hydrogen charge we know plus 1, sulfur we don't know, consider as x, oxygen charge we know that is minus 2 is equal to 0, 2 plus x minus 8 is equal to 0, where x equal to plus 6, right students, plus 6 is the oxidation state of sulfur, <clears throat> by looking also we can, 2 hydrogens plus 2, 4 oxygens minus 2, totally uh, 4 oxygens will be uh, minus 2 into 4 minus 8, 2 oxygens plus 2, minus 8 to plus 2, it becomes minus 6, minus 6 must be equal to 0, we need plus 6, by looking also we can. So like this for any molecule we can easily find the oxidation state. Oxidation state of an element in uncombined state should be taken as a 0. We know already. One or two exceptional cases. CrO5. What is the oxidation state of chromium? 
5 into minus 2 minus 10 minus 10 must be equal to 0 plus 10. Plus 10 means 10 electrons lost. There are no 10 electrons in the chromium outermost shell. Hence, that is wrong. In such cases, we need to follow structure students. It is called a butterfly structure. This is called butterfly structure. If OO bond is there, that is called peroxy oxygen. For peroxy oxygen, minus 1. Right, students? It is a normal oxygen, hence for this minus 2 must be taken. Minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 6 must be equal to 0. We want plus 6. Plus 6 is the right answer, but not plus 10. Okay. So, peroxy oxygens minus 1, normal oxygens minus 2, and super oxygens minus a half. You should consider. So, for any molecule, we can easily find the oxidation state students in this method. After that, redox reactions are classified into uh, many types. Addition, substitution redox reactions, displacement redox reactions, disproportionation redox reactions, many are there. But among them, the important one is uh, uh, disproportionation redox reaction. We will see that. The important redox reaction is disproportionation disproportionation redox reactions proportionation redox reaction so it means the single species undergoes oxidation and reduction so a undergoes oxidation and reduction right students a to a plus 3 it means increase in oxidation state. Hence, it is called oxidation. And A to A minus 3. Decrease in oxidation state. Hence, it is called reduction. Right, students? So, A has 0. 0 is intermediate between the plus 3 and minus 3. In such cases, the redox reaction called disproportionation redox reaction. The single element which undergoes oxidation as well as reduction and the reactant oxidation state must be intermediate between the products. Right? Example is phosphorus P4 converted into HPO2 PO3 minus plus and PH3 at the Right, students? Now, <coughs> Hydrogen plus 1, 3 into minus 1, minus 6, plus 1, uh, how much it is? Minus 6 plus 1, minus 5 is equal to minus 1. X minus 5 is equal to minus 1, X is equal to plus 4. And here, 3 into plus 1 is equal to plus 3, should be equal to 0, minus 3. It is 0. 0 to plus 4, oxidation. 0 to minus 3, reduction. So, both the oxidation and reduction will be happens by a single element and the reactant oxidation state is an intermediate. Hence, such reactions are called disproportionation reactions. So, these are important. Next, after this, balancing redox reactions given students. Redox reactions will be balanced in acidic medium, basic medium by ion electron method and oxidation number method. So, by verifying the given options in the question, we can easily identify the balancing, nothing but coefficients of reactants and products. So, easy to identify. So, these are the most important uh, points in redox reactions, students. You verify the remaining information also. Next chapter, so we are going to discuss is, that is, so in assignment number 2, Next chapter is environmental chemistry. Environmental chemistry. Especially one bit they are expecting from this chapter in CET exams. At least one bit. In this chapter we are going to study about air pollution, water pollution and soil pollution. So first of all few terms we will discuss. 
COD, BOD, next PLV, yeah. one by one, chemical oxygen demands, chemical oxygen demand, chemical oxygen demand, chemical oxygen demand meaning is amount of oxygen required for uh, to oxidize the organic substances in the polluted water. So it means to remove the uh, microorganisms in the polluted water, what is the amount of oxygen required? Then only water will be purified. <clears throat> so if COD value increases, it means more oxygen increases. The indirect meaning is the water is more polluted. To clean that, more oxygen is required. Hence, COD value increases that indicates pollution is more pollution increases to oxidize the microorganisms in the more polluted water more oxygen required next bod bod full form is biochemical oxygen demand biochemical oxygen demand it means <clears throat> amount of oxygen required for a microorganisms growth in pollutant water for uh, uh, two days at a certain temperature called BOD, biological oxygen demand. Yeah. So BOD value is also directly proportional to pollution. BOD value also directly proportional to pollution. COD means amount of oxygen required to oxidize organic substance in the polluted water. If more organic substances are there, more COD value. BOD means amount of oxygen required for microorganisms in our uh, polluted water uh, for uh, two days at a certain temperature called BOD. BOD increases, obviously pollution also increases. TLV full form is threshold, threshold, limit, value, threshold, limit, value. The meaning is the minimum level of toxic pollutants in the atmosphere which affects the person adversely who is working in that company or a factory for 7 to 8 hours. That level of pollutants called threshold limit value. It means a minimum pollutants uh, which causes uh, harmfulness of which one a person who is working in a company or a factory called threshold limit value. If this value is lower, then pollution is more. TLV is directly proportional to, sorry, inversely proportional to pollution. TLV is inversely proportional to pollution. It means if it is the minimum value, pollution will be maximum. Right, students? It means minimum in the sense the person with the least amount of uh, which one that is uh, pollutants, he will be affected more. If more in the sense, the pollution is very, very high. That's why TLV is inversely proportional to which one? Yes, pollution. A, B, C, D. Person A, B, C, D. TLV values are 10, uh, 20, 30, 40. So, who will be affected? If TLV values for A, B, C, D are these values and most polluted is lower the TLV, pollution will be higher, easy to answer. After this, uh, about ozone, we have to discuss. There are uh, many spheres, lithosphere, stratosphere, meso mesosphere in the atmosphere. So in stratosphere, uh, which is, uh, which consists of ozone layer, so ozone layer will be depleted by Depletion of ozone layer and causes depletion of ozone layer. Ozone layer. So, what is the reason for depletion of ozone layer? 
द रीजन इज मेन रीजन सी एफ सी सी एन ओ एंड सी एफ सी एफ सी क्लोरो फ्लोरो कार्बन सी एन ओ एंड सी एल टू दीज थ्री केमिकल्स कंबाइन विथ ओजोन एंड देन ओजोन लेयर विल बी डिप्लेक्टेड बाय द फ्री रेडिकल मैकेनिज्म वॉट हैपन्स वेन ओजोन लेयर डिप्लेक्टेड इट मीन्स होल्स ऑन ओजोन लेयर it causing uh, a direct falling of ultraviolet radiations from the sun onto the surface of earth earth will be heated and skin cancer cataracts many adverse effects are there reason and effects are very very important for your uh, ct exams okay this is depletion of ozone layer next one students acid rains acid rains acid rains means reason due to due to oxides of oxides of nitrogen and sulfur nitrogen oxides no and no2 uh, next sulfur oxide so2 and so3 these oxides are responsible for uh, acid rains while raining these oxides are available in atmosphere as a pollutants due to pollution then these oxides combined with the rain water For example, NO3 or NO2 plus H2O gives rise to HNO3. Acid it is. The pH of rainwater is four to five, four to five, which is very harmful. Reason pH for rainwater and what are the effects of acid rains? So due to acid rains, the water is not potable. water it means it will not suitable to drink and the fertility of the soil will be affected by the rain water and uh, many for example taj mahal uh, so its quality was decreased due to acid rains the historical monuments will be affected right students this is about the acid rains the next topic is greenhouse effect greenhouse effect greenhouse effect it is also called global warming also called global warming uh, they are asking a question what is the greenhouse what are the greenhouse gases which are the following is a greenhouse gas and greenhouse effect due to which effect first one is co2 then cfcs then no then water vapor so these are the chemicals responsible for which one greenhouse effect so then ozone also one of the factor yes so it is a 50 percentage responsible and next 17 percentage it is 18 percentage it is a 4 percentage percentage is also important for main purpose these are called greenhouse gases which of the following is not a greenhouse gas like that also they are expecting questions so you know uh, due to greenhouse effect earth will be heated then the ice on the earth surface in arctica and antarctica area will be dissolved and the sea levels will be increased so that causing abnormal rains floods and also the earth surface is almost covered with the water this is about the greenhouse effect next photochemical smog photochemical smog so especially every time they are asking this question photochemical smog photochemical smog smog if you observe <clears throat> hydrocarbons undergoes photochemical oxidation photochemical oxidation it means in presence of light they undergoes chemical oxidation and combined with uh, combined with uh, oxides of nitrogen oxides of nitrogen then forms a photochemical smog 
then forms a photochemical smog. So this is photochemical smog. It means any hydrocarbon which is present in atmosphere which undergoes oxidation in presence of A and those oxides combined with oxides of nitrogen, the formed compounds are called photochemical smog. So what is the reason for this? Reason, what is the reason for this? Due to photochemical smog. Ozone and NO2 combined with ozone and NO2 combined with with the hydrocarbons with the hydrocarbons then forms formaldehyde it means HCHO HCHO acrolein acrolein next TAM polyacrylonitrile these are the compounds responsible for the photochemical smog next so what are the components present in the photochemical smog so peroxides peroxides aldehydes next ketones ketones and organonitrates organonitrates these are the components present in the photochemical smog and these are the chemicals responsible for photochemical smog. Very, very important students. This is, this is all about environmental chemistry and a few important terms for objective purpose. Now the next chapter is S block elements. Sorry, P block elements. Next one is P block elements. P block elements. Yes, students, P block elements. In P block elements, there are uh, two groups given in the first year syllabus. So, one is 13th group elements. 13th group elements. Students, I am discussing only important points but not the full information keep in mind. 13th group elements are boron, aluminium, gallium, indium, thallium. Configuration 2s2, 2p1, 3s2, 3p1, 4s2, 4p1, 5s2, 5p1, 5p1, 6s2, 6p1. Before 6s, 5s10 and it is 4f14. Configuration is very very important students. Then atomic size we will see students. Atomic size. From boron to aluminium the size of atom will be suddenly increased. It means boron size less than aluminium. Aluminium greater than boron. Because here S orbital and P orbitals are there due to strong screening effect the size will be increases if it is a weak screening effect size will be decreases we read in the lanthanoid contraction due to poor screening effect size decreases next after that gallium size less than aluminum actually gallium size must be increased than aluminum but gallium size is less than aluminum otherwise aluminum greater than gallium aluminum greater than gallium because Due to poor screening effect of D orbitals in gallium, poor screening effect, then size will be decreased than aluminium. After that, indium. So, after that, thallium. Okay. There is an irregular trend in the atomic size or periodic properties in the 13th group element because the differentiating electron enter into P subshell. Right, students? Next. Ionization enthalpy, at least one bit they are expecting from the periodic table because it is not regular trend. So, there is irregular trend in the periodic properties in 13 group elements. Hence, they are asking questions. Ionization enthalpy, boron, thallium, gallium, boron greater than, thallium greater than, gallium greater than. Next, 
after that aluminium greater than india aluminium greater than india observe students boron is small size hence to remove electron more energy required to break the attraction between the nucleus and electron because of small size next thallium why thallium next immediately to remove electron from thallium more energy required more ionization and thallium why reason because 4f and 5d10 orbitals having poor screening effect due to poor screening effect the outer 6p electron is tightly held to the nucleus because of poor shielding effect of 4f and 5d tightly held means more energy required to break that high attraction and hence ionization enthalpy will be more due to reason poor screening effect of 4f and 5d orbitals in thallium after that gallium yes here also due to somewhat poor only not that much of poor effect of d orbitals only here d and f orbitals right students after that aluminum because of aluminum size when compared with these little uh, uh, smaller hands aluminum next after that indium right students so this order is very very important next electronegativity so small element is boron greater than aluminum is the only metal in this group that's why it should be last metals are electro positive i am writing electronegative character hence it is less electronegative and more electro positive after this order will be electronegativity character order thallium indium gallium thallium indium gallium right students due to poor screening effect electrons are attracted towards nucleus that attraction is nothing but electronegativity after that indium after that gallium aluminium is the only metal in this group right students so these are all under physical property sorry periodic properties of 13th group elements so irregular trend we can observe in 13th group elements right students so in this uh, uh, next topic is in this concept <coughs> boron and their compounds the given compounds are boron and its preparation few equations and uh, few preparations given you just follow perfectly after that uh, borax and boric acid diborane these are the four compounds given so first we will discuss boron and their compounds Yeah, boron and its compounds here in the cells and its compounds in that first one is boron second one is borax third one is boric acid fourth one is diborane okay now <clears throat> so boron easy you follow your uh, notes or textbook that's sufficient for these groups especially no need to study any other material textbook is good enough because it is a theoretical information now borax formula will be na2b4o7 10h2o it is called borax it is also written as a complex na2 so the next b2o3 or b4o5 b4o5 oh here it is a five times 8h2o it is also another formula of uh, boron it is o4 only oh4 only it is tetra hydroxy it is right next preparations given physical and chemical properties also given among them the important is borax bead test borax bead test borax bead test borax when you heated na2b4o7 10h2 uh, in the beginning heat it 
then water will be removed Na2B4O7 when you heat it then you will get 2NaBO2 plus B2 then this is called sodium metaborate when sodium metaborate combines with uh, metal oxide B2O3 plus cobalt oxide then gives rise to CO BO2 twice Cobalt metaborate. Cobalt metaborate will be formed. Cobalt metaborate. Getting students? The color of cobalt metaborate is blue color. It is a blue color bead. Blue color bead. The color of this cobalt metaborate is blue color. It's a blue colored bead. That's why it is called borax bead test. In place of cobalt, if I keep nickel, then I will get NiBO2 twice, CrBO2 uh, twice. Next, manganese BO2 twice, iron BO2 twice. It means different metals if you take, then different metal beads we will get. Nickel metaborate, chromium metaborate, manganese metaborate, iron metaborate, different different colors we can observe. These are all colored beads. Hence, this test is called borax bead test. It is what important for objective. Next, after this, boric acid. Boric acid formula is H3PO3 called boric acid. H3BO3 called boric acid. Uh, its preparation properties, physical and chemical, everything given. But the important one is is it acid or a base? Otherwise, if it is acid, Lewis acid or a Lewis base, or sorry, Lewis acid or a Bronsted acid. That's what we, we uh, require for us. First one, it is weak. Mono basic acid. Mono basic acid meaning is it can accept a pair of electrons. One pair it can accept. Electron accept are called uh, acid. Right? So weak mono basic acid. It is Lewis acid. Lewis acid. But not Bronsted acid, very very important, but not Bronsted acid. Bronsted acid means proton donor. It will not donate proton. It will accept uh, electron pair from OH minus in water. Hence, it is Lewis acid. So B H3BO3 is also written as BOH thrice plus water H2O then gives rise to BOH four times this minus and H plus here two moles I am taking then it will becomes H3O plus so by taking electrons from OH groups of water it becomes which one uh, Lewis acid but not Bronsted acid. This point is very very important. Students. Next, boron hydrides. Hydrides of boron. Hydrides of boron. Many hydrides are there. Among them, B2H6 that is called diborane. Diborane formula B2H6. Diborane is nothing but uh, central atom is boron undergoes sp3 hybridization central atom boron. So B2H6 boron, boron, one hydrogen and another hydrogen students, right? And this structure is just like uh, yes, like this. Hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. So these rounded hydrogens are terminal hydrogens and two borons. Four terminal hydrogens and two borons on a plane. 
and these two bridged hydrogens one is above the plane another one is below the plane each boron undergoes sp3 hybridization and this bond is nothing but a banana bond also called a tau bond so this point is important in diborane concept next b3 n3 h6 b3 n3 h6 how it formed b2 h6 treated with ammonia then forms b3 n3 h6 it is called borazole borazole also called inorganic benzene inorganic benzene borazole also called inorganic benzene so this name is very very important it is just like as a benzene ring structure hence it is called uh, borazole or also called benzene uh, inorganic benzene structure with this uh with this in p block uh, 13th group elements and their important points only discussed after this in p block only 14th group elements given for us 14th group elements are nothing but carbon family yes it is 14th group elements 14th group elements also called carbon family So carbon, silicon, germanium, tin, lead. These elements called fourteen group elements. Carbon configuration, you know, two S two, two P four, two P two, three S two, three P two, four S two, four P two, five S two, five P two, six S two, six P two configuration. Four D, four F fourteen, and it is five D ten configuration students. Right. physical properties periodic properties all are showing regular trend only there is no irregular trend you follow the textbook but i will discuss the important three compounds that is uh, those are diamond graphite and fullerenes diamond graphite and fullerenes diamond graphite and fullerenes first diamond each carbon undergoes sp3 graphite each carbon undergoes sp2 fullerenes each carbon undergoes sp2 so now diamond diamond graphite fullerene all these three are allotropic modifications of carbon now each carbon surrounded by four other carbons in diamond here each carbon surrounded by three other carbons and it is a sacar ball structure it is sacar ball structure it is a football structure it is so here so each carbon surrounded by four means strong bonds are there 3d network structure it is 3d network structure it is a layered structure hexagonal layered structure so one layer slipped upon another layer hence it is acting as a lubricant because of a hexagonal layered structure lubricant it is hard it is soft because between layer the distance is very low it will be slipped over another it is soft next it's not a conductor it's non conductor and it is good conductor good conductor because the reason is only three electrons involved in bond formation but in outermost shell four electrons are there the extra electron involved in the conductivity hence the conductivity of graphite is more and diamond glitters because of high refractive index diamond is a hard because of three dimensional network structure diamond is non conductor because of no electron is available to conduct electricity diamond graphite is soft because of hexagonal ring structure and graphite is lubricant because one layer uh, slipped over another layer graphite is a good conductor because the fourth electron serves in conductivity 
and sp2 hybridization sakar ball structure there are many rings so those rings are 26 member rings 20 six member rings and 12 five member rings are available in these all rings are connected to each other so it is c60 in c60 buck minister pullerin right students sakar ball structure so this is about uh, allotropic modifications of carbon physical properties periodic properties follows a regular trend and also silicon and their compounds given students you follow silicons silicates silic uh, silicones like that um, i gave only important information let us discuss a few bits uh, from this topic Okay, students, I will discuss a few bits from these three chapters. The first chapter is Environmental Chemistry. Bit number 80 to 90 belong to Environmental Chemistry bit. I will discuss a few bits from Environmental Chemistry. 80. Which of the following gas is not a greenhouse gas? So, greenhouse gases are uh, here methane, okay, oxygen, okay, water vapor also, okay but not CO. CO is a, uh, which gas that is, uh, CO2 is a, uh, yes, CO2 is a greenhouse gas, but not CO gas. Next. If BOD value less than 5 ppm, then the sample to be, BOD means amount of oxygen required to oxidize microorganisms, right? If it is less, the water content has more oxygen, hence only less oxygen required to oxidize microorganisms, right students? So, because the water has a rich in demand of oxygen, rich in demand oxygen. It means A correct answer. Getting? Next. Which of the following is not a common component in a photochemical smog? Photochemical smog consists of ozone, PAN, CFCs, aldehydes, ketones, even acrolein also, but not a common component. Yes. Right? Next. The TLV values to uh, in the values of toxic pollutants A, B, C, D, R. 9, 10, 100, 500 ppm parts per million. The most toxic is, I gave already, TLV is inversely proportional to pollution. TLV lower, pollution will be higher, toxic nature also higher. TLV lower for A, A is equal to 9 only. Hence, uh, the pollutant will be more toxic and the pollution is very, very high. Next. Okay, students. Next bit. Which of the following is a Lewis acid? Lewis acid is electron acceptor. To accept electron, it should have it should have incomplete octet. To complete their octet, they can accept electron. AlCl3, if you observe, then it has an incomplete octet because aluminium connected by three chlorines. Right? So, one, two, three, four, five, six only around aluminium. Hence, incomplete octet. To complete it octet, two more electron gains. Which of the following oxides is acidic in nature? Top element oxides are acidic, bottom element oxides are basic. Because top element is non-metal, non-metal oxides are acidic. Bottom elements are metals, metal oxides are basic. So here, top element is boron, its oxide B2O3 is acidic. Bottom element is indium, its oxide is which one? Basic. Catenation capacity of 14th group elements is Carbon has more catenation tendency when compared with other elements in the whole periodic table. Hence, 
कार्बन ग्रेटर देन ग्रेटर देन सिलिकॉन ग्रेटर देन जर्मेनियम ग्रेटर देन टीन जर्मेनियम एंड टीन ऑलमोस्ट क्लोज टू इच अदर ड्राई आइसिस वी नो ऑलरेडी सॉलिड सीओ2 कॉल्ड ड्राई आइस सॉलिड स्टेट कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड कॉल्ड ड्राई आइस okay students next bit quast extensively used in piezo electric material it contains quast nothing but silicon dioxide sio2 it contains silicon piezo electric substances are used to prepare buzzers when you press then electricity generated that becomes uh, sound waves Add addition of mineral acid to aqueous solution of borax forms. Borax formula Na2B4O7. Mineral acid like HCl or H2SO4, whatever you add, then becomes H3BO3. Four moles will be formed, and NaCl will be removed as a byproduct. H3BO3 is called orthoboric acid, right? Graphite is a good conductor of electricity because in graphite each carbon surrounded by three other carbon atoms the fourth electron serves in conductivity which is free electron so due to the presence of free electron in graphite 107 students decreasing order of p character in the following so first of all it undergoes sp3 hybridization SiO2 undergoes sp3 sp3 means s is 25 p is 75 percentage next b it undergoes sp hybridization sp means s is 50 percentage p also 50 percentage right students and graphite undergoes sp2 hybridization S is 33.33 percentage. P is 66.66 percentage. So higher is A. After that C. After that B. A C B. Yes. Answer will be D. Option correct. They are expecting P character, but not S character. Okay, students. A few more bits. <coughs> One time. Which species does not exist? Option A correct to this. First of all, reason is boron has no d orbitals. Boron configuration is 2s2, 2p1. It means there is no td sorry 2d orbital present in the uh, boron. There is no d orbital available in the second shell. Hence, due to the absence of d orbitals in boron. Boron hexafluoride will not be exist, but in aluminium, 3s2, 3p3, 4s2, 4p3, 5s2, 5p3. Due to the presence of d orbitals in all this, the valence will be extended to six also. Hence, these can form six bonds. But boron does not form six bonds. Maximum four bonds only because 2s and 2p, 2s1, 2p x1, 2p y1, 2p z. Totally four only possible. Maximum four, minimum uh, sorry, maximum four, but not a six due to the absence of the orbitals. Next one more. Oxidation state of oxygen is maximum. These bits are belong to um, redox reactions chapter. Oxidation state of oxygen is maximum. It is a normal oxide. That's why it is a minus two oxidation state. It is it is a peroxide hydrogen peroxide. Oxygen carries minus one oxidation state. Oxygen charge required for us. Fluorine is minus one. Two fluorines are there minus two. Must be equal to zero. We need plus two. It is plus two. Right students? Plus two. And two into minus one minus two shared by two atoms. Each one gets uh, minus one. Minus one must be equal to zero means plus one. Minus two plus two plus one minus one. Higher will be plus two. Hence answer is option B correct. Right? One one two. 
oxidation state of nitrogen in HNO4 is HNO4 is nothing but peroxy nitric acid. Then HNO4 structure required for us students N. So OH it is then otherwise N O O H it is. So after this double bond O and it is a single bond O. Right? This is the structure HNO4 it is. Right, students. For these two elements, minus one. For these oxygens, minus two, because these two are normal oxygens, and these two are peroxy oxygens. Right, students. Normal oxygens and peroxy oxygen. Nor peroxy, and these two are normal oxygens. Minus two, minus two, minus one, minus one. Hydrogen will be plus one. We know already for hydrogen plus one. So. Minus two, minus two, minus one, minus one. Totally minus six. Minus six plus one, minus five should be equal to zero. We want plus five, right, students? Because of peroxy oxygen, it shows only plus five. Oxidation state of iron in brown ring is little important for this. Iron required students. X consider water molecules are neutral, hence it is zero. Or water neutral zero. NO is a ligand which is a positive ligand already charge mentioned that is a plus one to this plus one plus sulfate is minus two SO four minus two hence minus two taken there is no charge on this species hence equal to zero right then X plus one minus two equal to zero X equal to totally plus one. Plus one means option B correct students, right? Next, the oxidation state of chromium in CrO five is. It's a butterfly structure already we have discussed with students. Five into minus two minus ten should be equal to zero means plus ten. But plus ten is the wrong answer first of all. Reason chromium configuration is 4s1 3d5. 4s1 3d5 in the sense there are six electrons only, but not ten electrons. But as for this, plus ten means ten electrons lost by chromium, but it has only six electrons in the valence shell as 4s1 3d5. But it's losing ten as per the formula. It's wrong. Plus ten wrong. Then what is right? Chromium double bond O O O. O. In such cases, you should know the structure. It is a butterfly structure. These two are peroxy oxygens. Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Right? O O bond is their peroxy oxygen. There are four peroxy oxygens uh, showing minus one. This is normal oxygen, hence it is minus two. Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, minus two. Yes. Yeah, totally. How many we will get? Minus six. Minus six must be equal to zero. Hence, it shows plus six. Right, students? Then right answer is option C correct. Plus six is correct, but plus ten is wrong. Don't solve by looking oxidation state in some cases because peroxy oxygens are available. Students, uh, with this, uh, I have discussed a bits from. E P block elements, redox reactions, and environmental chemistry, and a uh, few bits only I have discussed. And one more thing, in the given assignment, I included uh, previous CET questions and also examplar questions. Don't neglect the assignment questions first of all, and solve the remaining bits. Try if you have any doubts, post in our WhatsApp group. Okay, so we'll continue in the next session.